Okay, hey guys, Mike from Boyer Bows. Let's do part two of the uh, Osage build along that we've been doing. Uh, what I've done is the bow is, uh, the stave is in the same place it was when I got, came at you last time, except I've removed the shellac or the lacquer or whatever the guy sealed the bow with who sold me this piece of wood. Um, if you'll remember what the, there is some remaining shellac, lacquer, whatever it is from my original video. I've just sort of scraped off the uh, the remainder. And um, the guy who, who sells me these, these staves, he says he takes them down to a singular growth ring. And I always like to check his work and make sure that that's the case. And usually it is, or at least it's a good college try. Um, but let's let's take a look. Uh, sometimes it can't be helped. In order to get the lacquer off, you're going to break through a growth ring, as is the case here. Now you can see, here's one growth ring. Here's the, what I've always called the spongy layer. Now it's not a spongy layer. It's early growth and late growth. But um, uh, I still like calling it the spongy layer because it looks like a sponge to me. Uh, and I think when I described it that way to people, they, they understand it better. So I'm going to stick with it. I hope you guys will forgive me for that. But here it is. Here's the uh, the ring, the sort of white spongy layer in between, and then in the center there you can see the new growth ring that lies beneath. Um, now, if that were the only place it broke through in the whole stave, I wouldn't worry about it because it's over my what's going to be my riser, and that doesn't bend. So there's really no chance of something like that uh, failing on me as I continue this build and tiller and you know everything else but there was another one as you can see right here here again we have the single growth ring on top the what I call the spongy layer here which is actually the early growth layer I, mean, I, I got a lot of criticism for calling it the spongy layer which is why I'm balking here and then the single growth ring beneath so this one is still kind of over an area where I would call it mm, the fade out but it could be over the end the beginnings of my working limb and uh, frankly I, I think I might as well just take it down it seems to be the only place on this bow where the growth ring has been violated in any significant way um, well let's go over how I would it, it's a good opportunity for me to just uh, I like reducing down to single growth rings anyway it's just part of the process I enjoy so let me go over it again. I know I've gone over it before, if you guys have watched my videos before. But let's go over it again. Um, I take a scraper. This is, uh, people always ask me what scrapers I use. This is from Ace Hardware, guys. And the, the, this particular model is called, I guess, Hide. Um, the main thing, you can, I have another one. You know, I'll get the other one. The other one I use is the same, in the same scraper world. Um... Here's the other one. It doesn't have a, a brand name on it. I, I don't even know what what brand it is. Um, but the most important thing about the scraper is that it's got this this blade in here. This this is a removable. It's not particular. It's sharp, but it's not you know particularly sharp. And it's two sides. So when this side wears out, you can flip it to this side. And obviously, if you know how to sharpen these things, great. If you don't, you can just buy a replacement blade and start over again. The replacement blades are not cheap. They're almost, I think, uh, I think this whole shooting match is about 20 bucks. The replacement blades are like 8 bucks a piece. So it's better if you can sharpen them. But if you're someone who has the, uh, a problem with sharpening knives and other things like I do, uh, you end up spending some money, but they last. I have never bought a replacement blade for this, and I've had it for about two years. I've done a lot of bows, and I have I've, I've flipped the blade, so I'm getting close to that replacement time. Uh, but you know, anyway, they're great scrapers. I really like them. And uh, the way I the way I go about reducing a growth ring is I find the spot where uh, I either I just pick a spot anywhere on the bow. 
or I find a spot where the growth ring was violated that looks like the place I want to get uh, the next growth ring. And I just start scraping across so I have it going the entire width of the bow. And you can see as I go, I reveal more. Now this is a very, very shallow, let's look at the end here. You can see I don't have a lot of room, tremendous amount of room to work with here. The growth ring on top, and I think that is the earliest, so I have this big space here on this side to work with. Coming over here, it's pretty thin, so i got to be careful. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to do this and keep it in the camera at the same time for you guys here. And I'm just going to be gentle and try to get this thing going. You know what? Let me see if I can put... Alright, so let's do this again. See if I can keep it in the camera here. Makes it a little easier for me if I had two hands to be a little more sensitive to this whole thing. So now, pretty well exposed this uh, growth ring here. Interesting two-tone thing going on here. That's still only one growth ring though. But it's got this sort of, oh maybe it's, no it's just a weird thing. Huh. Well, let's, let's get to it. Do some inve- oh, careful. Don't want to violate another growth ring. That would be bad. Alright. Almost there. Now, something you got to watch out for is the wood isn't always rounded. It sometimes has valleys in it. Sometimes has U shapes in it, which can really throw you for a loop because you don't see them coming. And what you need when that happens is a different kind of scraper. These flat scrapers are great. Sometimes what you need is a rounded scraper, like this. This is a cabinet scraping tool, and what happens is you have these divots in, in the wood. Your flat scraper will keep scraping on either side of it, it'll miss this part, and by the time you dig deep enough to get this part, these have violated growth rings on either side. So you take your little scraper like yay, and you put it in the depression, and now you can scrape away that that extra little piece without violating the growth ring on either side. It's just another way of doing the same. It, it does the other, it does the other stuff too. But see, now I got in that little divot, that little depression, and I haven't I haven't violated any growth rings. And if you needed to pinpoint something, the rounded aspect can be a little more accurate. This is also really good when you work around knots. So let's go to a knot. And you see I didn't get all the lacquer off. Now this knot is actually, I believe, going to be part of my static limb. So I'm not so worried about it. But just to give you another example of how effective these round... See, I, I scraped the wood here over the nut here, but this valley in here still has lacquer in the valley, so I'm going to get that off same way, using the rounded piece I'm going to try to get all that extra stuff out that I couldn't get out with the straight edge scraper This is also how you reduce to a single growth ring around knots. It's you get a rounded scraper, and you'll find that 
the knots are no longer an issue because your scraper is actually getting into the grooves where you need it to get into to get that single growth ring, whereas it couldn't get in before with the with the the straight edge scraper. Okay, so basically you get the idea there. So the next thing I do is I either will follow. This is my new beautiful unmarred growth ring. Now I can take the scraper and the rounded scraper and work my way down both sides, but to save a little time, I take out the draw knife and I just try to get the blade under that spongy layer and I just pull little curls away and it will go, see how much I can take off now? It will go significantly faster as long as I stay inside that the spongy layer likes to give. It, it goes away easily. It like it's very crunchy. It likes to be pulled up. Problem is you can very easily cut through a, a multiple growth rings if you catch something uh, the wrong way. So take your time. Be careful here. And you can see how quickly this is happening now. I'll give you a shot of this whole area in a minute. And if you run into another one of those depressions where even, even though this is rounded a bit, um, if you come into that area with a depression, you can always come back with your scraper. Leave it. You can always come back with your rounded scraper later. See, I got one right here. I got a rounded area right there. Right here. See how the you can even kind of see how the wood goes up, you know, into like a valley. Even this isn't really. And if I dig in after this right here, there's a good chance I'm going to violate the growth ring. So I'll get it along the edge a little bit, and then I'll just continue up here. You know, just let it go. Come back to it with the uh, with the rounded scraper. And I'll just do this the entire length of the bow until I have a nice all right now let's look at the whole area now now I started about where did I start I started here and you can see I've taken all the entire growth ring off except for some of that early growth or that spongy layer as I like to call it and this whole area is now pretty much a single growth ring once I get that extra little you know scraps off with the, with the rounded scraper I don't go too hard with the with the uh, draw knife you don't have to it saves you a ton of time so when you come back and do your touch up with the scraper you're gonna be in great shape so that's uh, basically just do that with the whole bow and you will have reduced to a beautiful single growth ring in no time. All right, so here's our old growth ring that we got rid of, the spongy layer, the just a little remnant of spongy layer, new growth ring, beautiful, smooth, nice fibers, new growth ring down to an area with more spongy layer growing back into our old growth ring. And uh, basically I want the whole bow to look like that. And when I do that I will have the strongest self backing possible in a bow. Of course I'm still going to back it but that's just because I'm all about more is better when it comes to strength of a bow. Alright guys that's Mike from Boyer Bows. That's our video today. That's where I am in my part of the build along. So, uh, sorry it took so long between videos, but I'll try to speed up the process a little bit for the next one. Alright, take care guys. Talk to you soon.